Welcome, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and thank you for joining us today for our student faculty roundtable for our doctorate of business administration program. On behalf of you as faculty, staff, uh, administration, uh, it is a great pleasure to have you today. Thank you for joining us. I know right now during the holidays, a lot of people are traveling, a lot of people are busy spending time with family, buying gifts. But at the same time, it is a great time to be joining this kind of things because it puts into perspective, new year, new you, and things that we are going to be accomplishing in 2023. So again, on behalf of the UBIS family, it is a great pleasure to have you today. We will go over lots of information, um, get to be able to answer some of your questions, and, and, and again, have the opportunity for you to get to know a little bit more what we're all about. I know a lot of you have already met with admissions. A lot of you have already met with Dr. Santa Lova and myself. Um, but again, to get a little bit more perspective uh, on how we're able to humanize experience here at UBIS and, and be able to support you in this exciting journey that you are about to embark on at the beginning of 2023 in January. So again, thank you for joining us. My name is Rafael Salazar. For those that don't know me, I am Chief U.S. Chief Revenue and Customer Officer, and it is a great pleasure to be here with you today. On that note, the first thing that we want to talk about is what are the four pillars of our DBA program? And on that note, let me introduce you for those that haven't met her to uh, our dear friend, Dr. Antonina Santos. Thank you, thank you Raph, very much. I hope that you can hear me well, can't you? Okay, that's brilliant. So my name is Dr. Santelova, but I'm known uh, at UBS University as Dr. Tony, and that's the pleasure when my students in particular call me like that. Uh, so I'm the director of the DBA program and the research institute at UBS. I'm based in Oxford, United Kingdom, but today I have the pleasure of joining of this call from Tallinn, that is the capital of Estonia, Eastern Europe. And again, um, you know, that's, that's as Raf says, that's very Christmassy and festive season around the world, I believe. And we are all in high spirits and wishing you the best. And we really hope that that's the best of you and new achievements, uh, you know, new discoveries will happen with UBIS University. So that's a marvelous team that some, the, some, some faculty members as well as the current students are on this call today and will be willing to answer your questions uh, and to maybe share their experiences and testimonials uh, with you. I can um, emphasize that with the headquarter in the United States of America, Washington, DC, UBIS University is extremely global. Our students come from over 40, 40 uh, different countries in the world and every time we join our interactive sessions. Uh, that's the pleasure to have the discussion with people having this diverse experience and you know, introducing uh, these diverse cultures and traditions. So that's absolutely, uh, I would say the best, the, the best part of UBIS University. Um, having said that, I can say that the design of the doctoral program is a, such that we've tried our best to combine the best doctoral education practices both of the United States of America as well as of the European universities. And thus my faculty members, DBA program faculty members, they come from uh, Europe as well as the United States of America, as well as the research advisors. Uh, from this slide, you can, I'm not going to read it, don't be scared by that. Uh, in this slide, you can see four so-called pillars or uh, four features, I would say, which make our doctoral program different from, from other uh, doctoral programs uh, offered by other universities. Of course, the most important one is the customized, the personalized approach to advising. Uh, all of you here, the current students, and I hope the uh, prospective ones, you come with some passion. You come with some concern, deep concern about some real uh, program in business world uh, in your country, maybe or the global program. And we are here to help you to refine, uh, you know, your research question that you are going, you know, to work on, to research, 
and hopefully to craft with our help the uh, top quality dissertation, DBA dissertation. So therefore, when we assign advisors for you, we try to get not only, we are looking not only, uh, you know, for the relevant expertise on the side of our advisors, but also for some personal click that we hope that happens between you and your advisor that, you know, you could be really motivated, really encouraged and really scaffolded on your way of writing up the dissertation. And that's a lot of work. We all know that. And we all admire you for the efforts you're going to, uh, you know, invest into this. The other pillar, of course, is that although doctoral program is 100% online, it means that you can continue with your uh, job responsibilities, with your family caring responsibilities, your classes and other educational activities that can be embedded into your daily routine, right? However, we are all social beings and we all appreciate and we all crave it for communication. And apart from online communication that we organize on the regular basis, I'm going to talk more about that. We also minimum twice a year organize a so-called immersive experiences. It means that you're welcome to join in person the study programs either at one of our learning sites, and we have two of those, uh, one in Barcelona, in Spain, the other is in Geneva, Switzerland, or in some other fascinating parts of the world. Like very recently, uh, we had an absolutely marvelous study tour to Strasbourg. And Strasbourg is the city located right at the border of France and Germany. So we started the best leadership practices, uh, you know, on the examples of companies on, in both countries, uh, in, in France and, uh, and in Germany. So that was very educational and very enjoyable because we talk not only about networking and education here, but about making friends and sometimes friends for life, as well as partnerships, uh, business partnerships as well. The third pillar is the research orientation. I come you know, from very um, European, I would say. I completed my PhD at the University of Oxford, a uh, very uh, research-oriented uh, uh, doctoral um, practices, traditions, and therefore, at Ubis University, you know, I really encourage that all of you uh, get active in this direction. Because ideally, you do not only submit your completed uh, thesis for uh, defense, but also for a publication, a paper for publication. And that's the ultimate goal. And we are all here faculty members. Uh, and I believe that Dr. Kule would tell us more about that. We are here to assist and to help you with that. Uh, apart from that, we organize the platforms for you to build the skills absolutely essential for academia, as well as for the business world, I would say. Uh, for instance, we conduct colloquiums, usually on Sundays, where we invite guest speakers. And those are prominent uh, business people from different industries, as well as uh, you know, well-known scholars uh, coming from all over the world. Just in 2022, UBIS organized the 330 seminars like that, where we had the representatives of about 20 different higher educational uh, uh, establishments around the world, and many of those are our partners as well. So why we organize that? Of course, you can find a lot of online lectures, online materials in the internet now. It's different. What we offer uh, that you do not only listen uh, to the presentation of a guest speaker, let us say, and admire it, but you have a chance to ask your question, uh, to practice, you know, there's a skill of being able actually to have the courage and confidence to ask what you're interested in or you have questions about. It's quite important and, you know, it takes time. So that's also uh, the contribution to the skill set you're going to acquire with the DBA, DBA program. At uh, the, and finally, finally, uh, the, the fourth pillar uh, to help you to help you to make the proper impact. You know, we know that, of course, you are all professionals, you are all business people, very busy. However, uh, we know that many of you are interested in academia and talking about academia, interested in teaching, maybe at a university at some point in your career. And we've been thinking about how to help you with that as well, because uh, having doctorate uh, under your belt, you know, the degree actually that opens this avenue for you. So you can start, if you're interested in applying for lectureship, professorships position. But 
having just the doctoral degree and having the training to enter a classroom and to be encouraging, insightful, and interesting for students, these are two different things. And at UBIS, we provide you with the training, we provide you with the seminars where we discuss pedagogy. It's also a huge science, right? It's very important. We discuss the scientific thought and um, teaching techniques and methodologies. And I organize those with your help, with the help of doctoral students. So I really encourage you to join us. Uh, you're going to have a fascinating and exciting full of different uh, achievements, I would say, on the way life uh, at the doctoral program. Rep, I can continue, but I believe that the next slide tells us. Yes, that's actually our reasons to love you, Miss, as we had a, our four pillars. So, Miss Whitney, you want to share that with us? Yes, of course. Hi, hello. I'm Whitney. I'm one of the team leads here in admissions. Um, and these are some of the things that we're really proud of and that make UBIS um, unique. And you may have heard some of these from our team already, but I think it's important to put them all together so you guys know what we're really proud of. One of the things you can see here is links with the corporate world. Um, that comes from our history, our reputation, but it also comes from the people that are present here today. Our faculty, we pride them on being not only academic, but also active in their industry. So you're getting information that's modern challenges, modern issues. That is what you would be dealing with in your industry. So that also brings in your cohort. These connections are also the people you are with are like you. High level um, executives, high people who are really committed to their industries and are dealing with a variety of challenges across a variety of continents, um, which is a really unique perspective that we're able to provide here. The boutique-sized classroom, um, you know, I think it's really important when we're online that it's still personal and that's something we really value. And so you're not sort of sign on, turn off your camera and listen to someone. That's not at all how we function. You are active, you are talking together. Um, it's very much an interchange and we do that by keeping those classes, those online rooms really limited for you guys. Um, we emphasize on practical experience. Um, uh, we want this to be an actionable degree. Uh, not just a dissertation for you. We want it to be something that goes out into the world that you contribute to your industries and that also helps you grow within your industries. Um, as we have Swiss roots and a campus in um, Geneva, we have cultivated network with the United Nations, um, which is obviously a network that can have a lot of use depending on where you're coming from and what your goals are. And as Dr. Tony noted, you know, are extremely, extremely diverse. We're in almost every continent um, and people are coming from so many different perspectives. Again, that's a really unique, unique thing that we can bring. Um, not just one view from one academia, it's from all over the world. Um, and then of course, she talked about the immersive experiences. So you have quite a lot of flexibility, but also the ability to come and join those and be face-to-face. -face. So it's up to you what your priorities are, how much of that face-to-face -face and closeness that you need and how much you would you wanna function on your own we facilitate that um, and make it a part of your journey. So these are things we really, really value and um, we think that you guys are gonna benefit from that. All right, thank you, Whitney. All right, so today's agenda, today's agenda, what we're going to be covering, we want to introduce you to some of our faculty. Um, we want to introduce you to some of your DBA classmates. And what we're gonna go over, we put some of the frequently asked questions that we get from our students. That from frequently asked questions that we get from our faculty, so now we'll get frequently asked questions that we get from our classmates and give you the opportunity to ask any additional questions that you may have. Uh, and then we'll talk about next steps. So on that note, why don't we start introducing our faculty? You all have the opportunity to be with Dr. Santaloba, but Dr. Santaloba, you want to give us a pleasure and pre-introduce everyone and then everyone can introduce themselves. I don't know if we want to start with Dean Hamilton. Hello, everyone. Uh, happy holidays for those of you who celebrate. It's a pleasure to see so many of you here today. Uh, thank you, Raph. My name is Dean Hamilton. I am a faculty member as well as the Vice President of Academic Affairs. I also serve as Dean of Faculty. So you guys know you have to wear many hats at work and I, I do here as well. Uh, pleasure again to see so many new students here. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to welcome you and also to introduce my faculty. My faculty are 
top notch. I knew you probably thought I was going to say that. So um, I really strongly believe in all of them. They all have at least uh, a PhD, DBA, doctoral level courses require that your faculty teach uh, and are credentialed at the highest levels. So I am here to make sure that you are always in good communication with your well-credentialed and well-seasoned faculty. They come from a variety of industries. So no matter where your research leads you, uh, you will be able to connect, like Dr. Tony said, with a faculty member who has been in your shoes and they want to help you along through that long research process. And uh, that's my job is to make sure that you are connected with the greatest faculty we can offer you. You'll see lots of faces on the screen right now. My picture is up there. Dr. Tony's picture is up there. She runs the program. Uh, you want to be nice to her. Uh, you want to be respectful to her because she is in charge of the entire DBA and EDBA programs. Um, speaking of great faculty, Dr. Culey is also here. I'll let him say hi in just a minute. He is a well-established faculty member here. I hope everyone here gets to have him in class uh, at least one time. Um, he has a strong reputation of being an excellent instructor here, and we are thrilled to welcome him back um, in the classroom. Dr. Goldsmith, again, is, a, is, is well known here at UBIS. Um, he teaches many different courses in our DBA program, as well as our EDBA seminars. Um, he, again, is uh, got a long background and a long list of credentials, which includes a DBA, um, a JD, uh, master's degrees, and so forth. So again, you have well-credentialed faculty, and I encourage everybody to view our faculty and their credentials in our current catalog. Uh, you can list, uh, I mean, you can see our list of uh, everyone who works here, myself, everyone uh, here on the call, we're all listed in our catalog. And if you'd like to meet with any of us and discuss how we can better help you, let me extend that to everyone here um, to reach out. Um, Dr. Culey, would you like to say a few words? Thank you, Dean Hamilton. Hi, everybody. My name is Stuart Culey. So I am... Um... Uh, I began my career at UBIS as actually the director of the DBA um, and was instrumental in re redesigning it. And then it was taken over by the very capable Dr. Antonina Santalova, who's taken it up to the next level. Um, I'm a graduate of the University of Cambridge, where I did my PhD, and then my first academic job was as director of studies at the University of uh, Oxford. I guess I fall into the category of what's called an academic entrepreneur or an academic practitioner. So I've not only started businesses, I've scaled the businesses and I've sold businesses as well. So um, it really, this is something that you know, I can bring to our, our DBA and it's something I'm really passionate about. One thing I love about teaching on the UBIS DBA, as uh, Dean Hamilton and, and Dr. Santalova have mentioned, the actual depth of the student body, the breadth of the student body, it's multinational, multicultural. And I think just as a final thing I'd like to add is that there's a real sense of community amongst our DBA students, which makes it really, really special. Um, I often find that on teaching the DBA, for me, it's more an exchange of ideas rather than me just standing up and delivering uh, my, my output. So it's a real pleasure to be here. I'm honored to be uh, a, a faculty member at UBIS and to have the opportunity to work with such an amazing team as well. So I hope to see you on our DBA. Thank you, Dr. Cooley. Um, I also would like, um, Aaron is listed on our slide here as well. If you are located in Geneva, he is our campus manager. Aaron, if you'd like to say hi to the group. Hello, good morning everyone in the US. I'm Arun, I'm uh, the new Geneva front office manager. I took over from Stella, which uh, is a pretty, uh, pretty high bar to jump over. Um, <laughs> so I help admissions and student services and uh, on any questions coming to Geneva. So if you've got any questions about moving to Switzerland or need any help with the procedure, feel free to ask. Thank you, Arun. And You're I noticed welcome. one more faculty member here. She's not listed on our slide. Professor Rodriguez Pena, thank you so much for dropping in. I know you're representing the rest of our faculty who could not attend today because of travel or you guys know how it is this time of year. So um, I do wanna thank you, Professor Rodriguez Pena for stopping by. 
we know you support all of our students and uh, we thank you for your time. Okay, Raf. All right, thank you. So um, on that note, let's move on to the next slide and let me introduce some of our students too. Uh, ladies first, um, I mean, we have a lot of students, uh, a lo lot of students in our DBA program. I appreciate with, with the busy, with your busy time right now, especially during the holidays for Ben Sam Marita and Shelter, who's hopefully here, uh, joining us, um, joining us today to provide their testimonial answers and our prospective students' questions. So, on that note, as like I said, ladies first, so Marita, if you could give us a question and introduce yourself, please. Sure. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good afternoon or hi, wherever you are in the world. Um, my name is Marita Cassis. I'm from Lebanon. So basically it's what, 3.30 p.m. my time. Um, I've joined UBIS about a year and a half ago. I am uh, the managing editor of an online platform and we do political analysis from the region. So I wanted to diversify my, um, I have a master's degree in international affairs, so I wanted to diversify my portfolio and uh, instead of going horizontally, try to also expand vertically. Um, and I stumbled upon you because I was trying to research online universities, as I'm sure most of you uh, did this. Um, because of work, uh, family, and other commitments, I can't travel. So I was searching for an online opportunity to, you know, continue my studies. And I stumbled upon UBIS. Most of the universities, when you try to send them a message or an email asking for more information or a catalog, they bombard you with emails and phone calls and messages asking you, telling you that it's a great university, and then they jump directly into the uh, payment plan. Uh, which is something that UBIS didn't do. So they gave me actually all the details that I needed to see how it would fit my career, um, how it the schedule would work around mine, uh, knowing that we have different time zones, we come from all over the world, we have different backgrounds, we're all professionals in our fields. Um, so I am sure you're all working full-time jobs and you have plenty already on your plates, but um, this is a very personal commitment, and I'm sure you've thought long and hard about per pursuing this um, DBA, and if you're here today, then I'm sure you've made already most of the decision whether to join or not, uh, but honestly, having a doctorate um, program that, one, fits your schedule, to a faculty that's um, and not because I'm a DBA student right now, and I really get along with the faculty, but um, it is a boutique, boutique teaching uh, method. So you're, it feels like you're on one-on-one -on -one with your professors, but at the same time, you have the opportunity to meet so many people from around the world. Um, if you, you have the time, you get to travel to do some sort of short programs and study abroad, which is amazing. Uh, the last one was in Strasbourg, where I went there with Dr. Tony, Dr. Santalova, and it was truly an experience like uh, like never before. And I've done my share fair of travel for work and for studies, but this was truly amazing. Um, so for you, I mean, it's not about the tuition, truly. You, you get online, you talk to the faculty before even enrolling, you get a sense of what it is you're looking for, um, how it fits your interest, how you can build also your your career around the classes that you're taking um how it make, how it makes sense for your career on the long run so um i've come from a political science and international affairs background so business was a minor for me but having taken the classes having took the courses with the with the faculty um doing research management business economics quality and quantitative research Honestly, it's um, it's been a pleasure. I've been with with this university for a year and a half almost, so time flew by, and I I have no idea how, but we made it work with a full time job and time difference and everything else, and um, yeah, I'm it, the faculty is open, the administration is open for your questions, and um, if I can be of any help, please feel free to reach out. My email I can provide you with my email or details. But uh, yeah, well, almost welcome to UBIS. Thank you, Marita. I really appreciate it. As always, a pleasure seeing you, uh, Mr. Vincent. 
Uh, you there? Hi. Yes. Hello, everybody. I am Vincent Filbert. I'm speaking to you from the United States Virgin Islands and the Caribbean. I'm originally from another island, Dominica, which is a little further south, and which just lets me segue into the point of the global nature of UBIS. Marita mentioned its boutique, absolutely. Um, but it's also global um, in terms of its outreach. People from all over the world, very, very unique experience, hooking up and making friends and connections throughout the entire world. It is very, very diverse. Um, I am also a, a director of the UBIS Student Council, and I just want to say a few words on that, um, which is just to, to let folks be aware that UBIS is actually very dynamic and trying its best to, to represent all interests as well as students' interests throughout the corporate structure of the organization. So I, I think those of us and those of you who may be interested in some extracurricular activity, you would want to consider um, participation in the UBIS um, Global Student Council. Um, some challenges involved in, in being a student council from different parts of the world and involves obviously different time zones. Um, but of course, it's an opportunity for folks to be creative and to participate and contribute their extracurricular, extracurricular activities, interest, and contribute to the development of the university. Um, it is tremendous in terms of its faculty, in terms of the, the, the administrative staff who work here. Um, very caring, very, very hands-on, very intimate, very, very much what you would expect from a small university um, setting. I, I highly recommend that you consider us. It is us, it's a family now. Um, I've been on the program for about a year as well. And um, looking forward to the next stage, which is the dissertation writing stage. A lot of hands-on support from all levels of the organization to get you to accomplish your goals, um, work in a very flexible way. Um, many of us are working people. And so you find that UBIS is, is able to design the program and be accommodating to those of us who have that you know, multi-faceted life to kind of continue whilst trying to pursue our academic studies journey. Um, so with that, I just want to say, my experience with UBIS stops. I've been to different universities throughout my, my, my educational career or educational journey. And when I selected UBIS, it was because of A, the fact that it's accredited and it's pursuing more and more for the levels of accreditation. Um, so I say, I say the ABC factor, you know, the boutique factor was very important. The diversity factor was very important. The global nature of the organization. And next to accredited, I also have affordability um, in terms of the financial commitment you have to make and the way you spreads out your disbursements to allow you to make your commitments in a very reasonable way. Thank you. Thank you, Vincent. And you all have an opportunity when we go over our frequently asked questions to hear more about uh, from, from, from Vincent and Marita. Uh, thank you very much, so, Vincent. I appreciate it. Uh, I don't believe Shelter is here with us right now, but he should be joining us hopefully a little bit um, as he was traveling today. So let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. And the next slide is some of our frequently asked questions by faculty. So the first one, um, Dean Hamill taught, touch on it, but maybe we can talk about it briefly again. Credentials and background. Uh, Dean Hamilton, do you want to um, uh, talk a little bit more about that? Absolutely. All of your faculty members here at UBIS have been credentialed, meaning that they meet the standards of United States accreditation. They have all attended uh, accredited universities. They've achieved graduate degrees. Like I said before, most have either a PhD or a DBA, um, and they are recognized here in the US, and we teach under the US standards. So um, you never have to worry about where your teacher uh, got their degree. They have that experience. They're willing to share it with you. Um, and we only hire people who fit in those categories. Um, availability and format, I wanna mention because a lot of you, uh, Marita and Vincent, thank you for attending. You guys both mentioned a good relationship with your instructors. Um, you guys have long days of research ahead, long days of writing, and you need 
faculty members there to support you. So when I hear students say this, I, I really am just so happy to hear that you have gotten that support that we, we told you you would. Um, our faculty are very committed and they will meet with you upon request. Um, they have office hours and all you have to do is send them an email um, and they will meet with you via Zoom. Um, how can I enter academia? I think Dr. Tony mentioned this um, briefly. And you're all here because you are obviously interested in research and entering the world of writing, publishing, and of course, academia, which can include teaching. Um, we are, again, supportive of this. I know you've heard this already today, um, but we wanna make sure that you get a taste of what it's like to publish, what it's like to do your research. And we wanna, we wanna um, have colloquiums, we wanna have meetings, we wanna have all sorts of events where you can mix and mingle with people who currently work in academia. And again, have been in your shoes. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you like, I add a couple of words here. Um, sure. Thank you, thank you, Mindy. Mm -hmm. So the matter is that also from time to time, we have vacancies at, at UBIS University where you can try your teaching skills, teaching at the master's and bachelor's programs. And that's an absolutely amazing experience. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, our already teachers and DBA candidates uh, could not join who we uh, wanted, you know, uh, to, to share their experiences with you. But that's absolutely the best opportunity ever because, you know, you can actually acquire additional qualification if you wish, right? Because with the practical experience in the classroom and theoretical training at our seminars, you will be encouraged even to write a mini dissertation. With that, you can apply for postgraduate certificate and we are here to help you with. Uh, and with this postgraduate certificate, that's kind of additional uh, credential, if you wish, that will help you to secure the place at teaching at the higher educational establishment uh, of your of your wish, of your desire. And I think that's that's also a, a wonderful addition, so-called extra curriculum embedded into UBIS DBA program. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Tony. Um, let me also mention that um, you know, some people come to school and they are a little worried about their English proficiency. Um, we do expect you to be able to write and communicate in English. I, I don't foresee that being a problem here with the group we have today, but in the back of your mind, you may be a little bit concerned about the level of academic writing that you would need to, to be at. Um, you are free to um, get any type of help you want. I know our teachers are very supportive. Um, but there are editing and proofreading services available to you, and your instructors would be able to provide uh, referrals if, if need be. So don't be hesitant. These things come with practice and good feedback from your instructors. So don't be afraid to ask for help, I think is the bottom line that all faculty would like to say to you about your English language proficiency. Um, English is a challenge for native speakers. So again, never be ashamed that you do want support and need support in that area. Tony, you look like you want to say something. <laughs> also, I do feel like that. <laughs> also, do remember that 90% of English users in academia are non-native speakers. 90%. It's not only just the majority, but it's the the majority majority. So that's why, you know, if other people, non-native speakers can do that, you can do that. And we are absolutely. here to help, as that Mindy says, absolutely. Absolutely, thank you. Okay, and last but not least, during the DBA, EDBA process, you will reach a point, it may seem like it's a far, far time away, but you will reach a point where you have your proposal written and you are ready to see your advisor. Dr. Tony and I will match you with an advisor we will make sure that your interest relates to their expertise and you will meet with them um, for the full time you are finalizing your dissertation. You will be assigned your research advisor once you draft your proposal and you get approval from Dr. Tony. You will stay with that advisor until you are ready to defend your dissertation. So, and depending on what program you're in, 
um, you know, that, that length of time will vary. And I'm sure that Dr. Tony will explain that to you, depending on your program. Um, I hope I covered everything. Does anybody want to add anything else? Dr. Keeley, I, I, Dr. Santalova? I think lovely, lovely, lovely discussed. Uh, just one more thing. We do not impose, not, not only, you know, force you to study what you do not want to research. The topic of your research uh, comes from you, with you, and I really hope that you can already join the program with some passion for some real uh, problem, as I have mentioned, uh, you know, in the business world. We are here just to help you to refine it, to make it doable and manageable within the period of the program. Because as you know, the best dissertation is the completed one. And we are here to help you not to drop out, but rather to succeed, to complete it, and to get that DR in front of your name. And if I can just add as well, you know, I think that's a very important point that Dr. Santanova uh, uh, made. Um, one of the beauty, beautiful things about the DBA is that, you know, when I think back to when the, the faculty on, on this call did their PhDs and their DBAs, they probably spent a lot of time by themselves in, in libraries uh, in the cold. And, and we understand that that's completely impractical for you because of the nature of your, of, of, of your, your career. And therefore we're very, very student -centric, centric and and we support you through the actual DBA dissertation writing process. And I think that's a, what makes our DBA a little bit different from our competitors. Right. Thank you, everyone. All right, let's move on to our student Q&A. Time constraints, how to fit it all in. Uh, Marita, do you want to share some insight on this one? Um, it's doable, that's, that's for sure. Uh, in the beginning, um, everything new is a bit overwhelming. I'm sure for everyone, it's the same. But once you get into the program, uh, you get to know the expectations. Uh, both of your instructor and your your own. I mean, what you're expecting from your class, um, it becomes very manageable and feasible. You don't need to spend <clears throat> crazy hours working on your um, assignments or your classes or your readings, but you do have to spend some time. And you'll see that the more you get immersed into your class, the more you'd want to spend time because you're the one who decided to engage in this DBA and you're the one who wants to make it work. It's really up to you. It's not, um, it's not, you know, an undergrads or a master degree where it's very stringent in terms of you have to do stuff because teachers are expecting it from you. Of course, there is a certain level of expectation and professionalism between professor and student, but it's also something that you owe it to yourself. And you'll see what I mean when you start with the program. Um, I was aiming to give it, I don't know, about 40, 45 minutes a day, um, every day, so that whenever the assignment was due, I would I would be done with, um, without stressing or giving it a second thought. Um, but some days I'm able to, you know, give it two hours, others uh, I won't be able to read or study, and that's fine. You learn how to manage your time as you go along with the class. Each class is slightly different. They're not all the same. Uh, the content differs, of course, and so does the assignment, but it's all manageable. And I have a full-time job. I work in news, so news never sleeps. And I am able to manage throughout with this chaotic schedule that I have. So if I can do it, I'm pretty sure everyone can. Thank you, Marita. That's great insight. How interactive is the program? Maybe we can tackle this two at the same time. And if, and if you're learning Zoom meetings, Vincent, would you like to take this one? Absolutely. Um, we have the, the Zoom meetings, which in my mind, this is this is a godsend. In fact, I was asking the professor the last session, how did the students or the PhD candidates of the last say 30 or so years manage, manage you know? Um, I can't imagine a world now without having the Zoom um, to, to connect people, but it's not just the Zoom. Um, we also do groups, like we have WhatsApp groups where our professors or teachers actually are on those groups. So questions that have to be clarified after hours issues outside of the Zoom um, can be addressed and um, almost like peer-to-peer -peer 
if a professor is kind of giving us guidance on, on our WhatsApp group, so you can have outside of the formal Zoom opportunities to clarify and even engage in little um, um, chats that will clarify stuff. One of the important features of the program is that all of the activities are recorded and are on the Moodle, and we didn't speak much about the Moodle, but um, are on the Moodle um, app, which allows you to go back and, and sit at your leisure and go through the recordings of the session. So you can actually play it over and over again. And from there, if you have any questions, you can now send that up to your WhatsApp group for clarification amongst your peers and also your professor your, your, who can also um, give input. Um, yes, this is the way the world is going. And I think um, it, it's very effective to, 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 um, to my mind, you know, you know, you know, you know, context of, of bearing in mind that you have a responsibility as a student to kind of do a lot of the heavy lifting yourself, you know, to take you over that hurdle. The Zoom is to clarify stuff, to learn perspectives, to hear from your peers, to compare and contrast um, information so you can develop the information and distill it better from what you yourself um, are doing during the rest of the week. Yes. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, Maria, are there group projects? Um, are there, yes, there are group projects. Well, not many, but there are depending again on the class, the professor and the content itself. Um, but we make it work also with the different time zones and different tasks. Um, the, the advantage of being online is that you can literally have the same file shared at different time zones and have everybody see everything simultaneously. So we do um we do make it work we're doing i mean in terms of what vincent said and in answer to your question right now um we're doing this for the most part online i mean most of us i think are won't come to class physically um and it has its challenges because at some point um we might feel distant at times isolated or perhaps even overwhelmed with our plans and daily lives because we're not in class physically um, but this being said, once you start your online journey um, and you get to meet your classmates and colleagues, it really becomes real. I know it's a foreign concept, but the virtual part of it all becomes truly tangible and virtual coffees become an actual thing. Um, and you'll see that you're part of a community. I talk with, uh, I don't call them colleagues or they're friends now we're friends i talk to my friends online more often than i see my actual ones here um and we discuss from everything we do in class to our daily lives it really becomes a friendship like any other so i know the online part and working in groups and learning through zoom sounds a bit <laughs> a bit weird but it, it actually is very beneficial and it's at your own pace and time so um, you can, it can work easily. Great, thank you. I just, I, I just want to jump in just two seconds sure. to add the, 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 the peer to peer um, thing that develops in the program. For instance, um, I'd give you a personal example. Um, I, I relate to some of my peers and, and utilize their own previous experience and work in my area to help develop my, 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 my subject area. I have a, what you call a more knowledgeable other partner who's also one of my students, colleagues, helping me with my, with my work. So there's a little peer-to-peer -peer exchange that can happen you know, in that global context. Thank you, great insight. Um, actually, I'll open this one on faculty too, whoever wants to answer it. What if I haven't decided on my dissertation topic? How can I begin without it? Raph, I feel that I have to jump in here. So Please do. Um, I would say, okay, you do not have your dissertation topic, and that's okay. Most likely, without the uh, defined dissertation topic or idea, even what to research, uh, you will take the traditional route, the traditional pathway to the doctorate of business administration. And that's where you start with the classes. And we have the eight classes, eight courses we offer for you, where you learn, when, where you study the foundations of research in business administration and management first. And then you study about the importance of literature review. And slowly, you start to develop the specific topic, the specific topic statement for your own research. 
Having said that, with the help of our professors leading these classes, we have absolutely marvelous online resources. If you go online from our uh, learning platform, the Moodle, uh, to EBSCO, that's where you can download some papers, some publications already in your field, in your area. And I suggest that my students start to read it slowly, you know, upload and read these articles. And that's how slowly, gradually, with the help of our faculty members, you form this idea and you refine it. And uh, but at the traditional pathway, by the end of the one year and a half, actually, only you're supposed to come up with the idea with the proposal itself. So that's why, don't worry, uh, you know, learning takes time, you're in good hands, and you will have it ready, and you have that refined and defined according to the plan, with our help. No worries about that. And perhaps if I can just add to that as well, um, what one of the interesting things, team, is that you know you may have a preconceived idea when you come into the program about what you're actually going to research on, but as you progress through the DBA program, the actual the the classes that you take might actually influence your research decision. And so, what you come in when you want to do with the, in the start may not be what you actually end up doing. Um, but we're there to support you through the whole process. Thank you, Dr. Curley. That's exactly the case. You know. Uh, academia or learning is always messy it's never a straight line so it's even better if you come with one idea and then you adjust it because it means that you are learning you are progressing and developing and that's what we are aiming at at this program thank you everyone Noel. let's move on to the next slide as we are covering our action in guayubes so now this is your time we have about eight minutes left so this is your time to ask any additional questions that we may have not covered. I believe we covered a lot, but any additional questions that we may have, that you may have, uh, we'll be more than happy to answer them. We can do them in a couple different ways. You can raise your hand old school just like this, so you can just pretend you're saying hello to me. You can do the raise hand emoji, or you could also utilize the chat. Um, and, and then from there, we can cover your questions. So on that note, let's get started with our Q&A. If there's any, I am looking here. So far, I don't see any questions. I'm going to somebody else's see it. And I don't see anything in the chat yet, which means we have also been doing a hell of a job, which I'm glad. Uh, covering all the all the information. Um, one more chance. Are there are there any other questions that we can think Brad, of before? Yeah. May I suggest that you stop sharing your presentation that we could see the audience better? Sure. Thank you. Maybe we can ask our audience to present themselves and uh, tell us more about. Yeah. I see. You. I see a question, and I believe Tola Chavez are the Tola. Well, how are you, my friend? Good to see you. I'm good. Um, thanks. Love the presentation. Sorry, I cannot um, show my video now. Uh, a question is, um, I'm, I joined a little bit late, but I wanted to be sure of what the accrediting body is. I know they are accredited here in DC with the IR, your, with the IR Education License <laughs> Board. Is there another accreditation in the US or the rest is international? I can actually take that one if, uh, if, yep, I can go, I can go ahead and take it. Thank you for the question, Adetola. So, um, UBIS is currently accredited by the IACBE, which is the International Accreditation Council for Business Education. Uh, as a university, we continue to strive for additional certifications and accreditations. It is with great pleasure to also announce that recently we will re also receive licensing uh, in the uh, in the in Washington DC by HELC, which is the Higher Education Licensure Commission in Washington DC. Um, in addition to that, we uh, UBIS has been certified by Eduqua, uh so certification. And, and also by being members of IACBE, we um, with a member of CHIA, which is the Council for Higher Education Accreditation. Okay, thanks, that does it. Thanks, yeah, that's my question. Okay, great. Um, are there any 
Well, we have about five minutes left, so I want to go over all questions. Uh, I want to go over additional stuff. Is there any other questions? I don't see any, but also wanted to take the time. I'm going to put her on the spot real quick. We have our president and CEO also joining us here today. Um, very rare. It just shows the pure representation of you guys. Very rare that you see the president and the CEO of the university joining joining the, the these events, especially with her busy schedule. I really appreciate her taking the time to be with us right before the holidays too. Uh, uh, jo joining us during du during this time. So I wanted to take the opportunity and put her on the spot and have her share a few words if possible, and then we can move on with next steps. So my internet connection is a bit unstable. Can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. Okay. I keep getting that flashing light. I don't know what's going on. I'm sitting today, <clears throat> excuse me, in the cold state of Connecticut in the U United States. So first of all, welcome. We really appreciate your interest in UBIS and we would love to help you on your educational journey. I think that the thing that... Um, my partner and I founded UBIS. We, we are a private university. We are, our mission is to create self-determination in individuals around the world through education. Um, we believe that education leads to peace and it leads to prosperity. And those were two of the founding principles of our university. We think that you as doctoral candidates are at a very unique point in your career. You're blessed in the sense that you are actually blending your own personal interests, the advancement of your own professional career with the ability to make a difference and contribute back into society. And so we are very eager to grow this program and invest in this program because we believe that programs like this around the world are the foundation for peace, are the foundation for economic prosperity, both at the community level and then at the individual level. So this program is very dear to our hearts. We believe that we are working with you to educate the next generation of leaders. And certainly, and hopefully everyone will agree with me that we need more leadership now. Our planet is in a very critical stage, not just ecologically, which is talked about a lot, but I believe in terms of ethics, business practices, what is the next generation of systems, business systems, capital systems um, that will really allow our planet and its citizens to flourish? Those are the questions asked and hopefully to some degree answered in our DBA program. So as I say, thank you so much for consideration. We would be delighted to have you join our community and thank you for your time and attention today. Thank you, okay. Thank you, Ms. Rafael, we appreciate it. All right, let's, uh, if we can go back to the presentation and go through next steps. So our next steps, it will be attending orientation. So on a student orientation, admissions, admissions team will be reaching out to you to go over uh, orientation uh, times and dates and schedule. Um, it is important, and admissions team will be reaching out to you as well, to complete your final admissions requirements. Why is that important? Because without your final admissions requirement being completed, you will not be able to have everything else that's needed, which is your US credentials, your dissertation handbook, uh, access to the learning management system Moodle, access to the library services, which is Learn and EBSCO, your final acceptance letter, your course mapping, and most importantly, your beautiful student ID with your picture. So you can show it off. Uh, so, it, uh, so the team will be reaching out to you to ensure um, what, what to ensure that you have everything needed and all the expectations are met. And if you don't have them help you get everything that is needed in order for you to be able to successfully start your program. So on that note, we are right at the 9 a.m. Eastern mark, um, Eastern Standard Time. So I think, think our meeting is pretty much over. 
So thank you everyone for taking the time today for me to be here with us. I know everybody, how busy everyone is with the holidays. So again, we appreciate um, you taking the time. Thank you to our faculty. Thank you to our students. Maria Vincent, you were fantastic as always. Always a pleasure seeing you. Um, thank you to you, the staff. And but most importantly, thanks to you, prospective student, for being with us today. Thank you again for choosing UBIS as your institutional choice. Have a safe holiday and we will be talking soon. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you, Vincent. You. Thank you, Marita. Thanks, guys. Hi, Good everyone. Thank, Thank you all. You. Most welcome. Hi, uh, most welcome. Thanks, and happy Christmas season's greetings to everybody. Dr. Kulig, good to see you again. You too, sir. Nice to see you, Vincent.